Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the other living Boo Boo Fiend Smith, Boo Boo Brownstein. So bad we had to say Boo Boo twice. All of that, like and subscribe buttons. We climb even higher, the 1400 ladder. I'm just going to jump right on into it here. Uh, Fiend Smith won the NAWCQ. Is there really any sort of surprise? Now, I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit because at the time we're making this video, we kind of know what the top four is. Like, there there was one Tempai in the top eight. It most likely lost to the Fiendsmith Snake Eye deck. We know that Fiendsmith Ubel just beat a Fiendsmith Snake Eye. There's a couple of Fiendsmith Snake Eye mirror matches in the top eight. Look, top four is going to be all Fiendsmith, whether it's Fiendsmith Ubel, Fiendsmith Snake Eye. Take your flavor. Fiendsmith was in all of the top four. That's what won Nationals. Whether it's Fiendsmith Snake Eye, Ubel, who cares, whatever. Fiendsmith won our Nationals, and I'm actually really happy about it, and the reason why I'm happy is because this shows Konami, hey, here's all the representation, here's all the data, there's a YCS, I think, in like California, August 17th and 18th, we'll probably get the ban list dropped after that event so that people can properly play test for said event, um, and then we'll go from there into a brand new format, and the more representation that there is for Fiendsmith and then anything Snake Eye or Ubel related, we can hopefully see some hits to those decks more snake eye than anything because i feel like you bell i feel like it's balanced like before phantom of you bell it was kind of lacking it was a solid rogue deck and then phantom made them a lot better but i think the fiendsmith cards is really what pushed it over the edge like a fiendsmith is just such an incredible engine i don't need to sit here and tell you how broken the cards are right but we did see some interesting things especially in the top 64 here's what's crazy about that Fiendsmith took up a majority of top 64 for the most part. I think it came out to like 30%, 29%, somewhere around there. Um, there was like 29 different Fiendsmith-related decks, whether it was with Cash Tira and then Snake Eye cards. I mean, it was it was all over the place. We saw Johnny Nguyen run it back with Runic Stun, and there was actually two Runic decks. I believe Johnny made top 16 or uh, top 32. Regardless... He ran it back. Who cares where he placed? He was able to get in the top 64 and keep pushing a little bit before he lost to, I believe it was, um, Fiendsmith Snake Eye. Uh, but congrats to Johnny Nguyen, a.k.a. Asian Persuasion. Sticking with Runic Stun and showing people like Robbie Cole and all these other Runic Stun players out here that, um, yeah, the deck's still pretty good. Technically, it was two Runic Stun. For whatever reason, they had Asian Persuasion specifically listed as Runic Stun, and then another player just listed as Runic. But the other Runic player was playing things like goes into one day of peace. So, like, it's Runic Stun. And it's it's actually interesting because it goes to show that even though a new set just dropped this weekend, um, people just decided to take Runic Stun and waltz into the event and just see what happens. Because if you can win the dice roll and you can get set up with Floodgates, Skill Drain, D, Fisher, whatever, you're sitting pretty. You know, it's, that's actually what I've been messing around with with White Forest was instead of playing like all these other cards, like we saw in the 3v3 tournament, someone was playing White Forest Runic, but he was playing Black Goat Laughs and things like that. I've opted more for like a Runic Stun strategy because you get blown out by things like Nib, Droll, Shifter. Why not just play Stun cards to just solidify your game state even further? Plus, being able to use cards like Card Scanner, reveal the bottom card of your deck if you call it right, add it to your hand, and it's a soft once per turn. You send it for, say, like a Stellar. You do full combo, and then you use your Diabell Synchro to get it back to your hand, and then activate it again, and then use the effect again. That's busted, Sugar Boo Bear, at least in my humble opinion. And so, I'm so happy that this format is just finally coming to an end. We basically have a month to be in a toxic format that is kind of irrelevant because we know what the results are going to be pretty much everywhere. People are probably going to be going to Board Breakers, People are going to be preparing for the best deck in the room being, I don't know, Fiendsmith Snake Eye and Fiendsmith Ubel, depending on what version of whatever Fiendsmith deck wins Nationals, even though it's going to be Fiendsmith something at this point. Like, who cares what it is, right? Um, but we also saw cards like Mole Charmy Perilia see not only side deck play, but main deck play as well, which was really cool to see. I actually just got done a couple minutes ago watching a top eight feature match. It was a uh, Fiendsmith Snake Eye versus Fiendsmith Ubel. I'd rather watch paint dry, but it was cool to see the Snake Eye player use Perulia and the Ubel player had called by the grave. But the idea is there. And I do think the more that I've tested around with Perulia, uh, Multrarming Perulia, it is a very good card. It's a very side deck dependent card. 
I don't feel like it's a main deck type of card, but being able to side deck it, I think, is really good. And we also saw things like Fanamaze, where, you know, I saw, who was it? Uh, the guy's name was Adidio, whatever his last name was. But he used per, uh, Perelia, and then in the same turn, he used Fanamaze, and he was able to draw a couple cards. His opponent had uh, Moon of the Closed Heaven up. So just being able to draw even more cards, and then, of course, you're drawing for turn, and as long as your hand size count plus six doesn't, eat, well, the opponent's field plus six, as long as that doesn't exceed what's in your hand, you're going to be keeping all those cards, so it really doesn't ever come up. So all of that was really interesting to see tech-wise. Now, of course, we got to talk about the biggest gear in the room, Ancient Gears making day freaking two. Currently, Ancient Gear Fortress, which is basically a Sangin summoning and the gimmick puppet field spell having a baby, um, it's currently like $17 to $20 right now. Did you know it was only ever printed in a structure deck? That's insane. It's never received a reprint out of a structure deck. That's wild. So that card blowing up is kind of funny to see. Um, the deck seems fairly easy to play and is pretty budget. Even right now after the deck profile came out from uh, Hakuna Maideda or whatever his name is, however you pronounce that. Um, even with the deck list now out in the wild, people buying up cards... Um, it is very budget. I mean, hell, you can get a copy of Ancient Gear Golem at a Speed Duel Secret Rare for like a dollar or two right now, depending on what happens with the market, obviously. Um, but I mean, everything's cheap. You don't need to get a max rarity copy of Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Rare. Um, and it was 53 cards, which was also really interesting. He, it was teched out. He was only on one copy of Desires and two copies of Thrust and Talents. I don't know why. You could easily make it 60 by maxing out on some things, max out on the Ancient Gear Fusion, you know, play a third copy of Dark Golem and like you're good to go. Um, but it was really cool. Like, even his uh, opponent in the feature match, he had to read the Chaos Ancient Gear Giant like three or four times. And he looks over the crowd and goes, is anyone else reading this card? Like, it was busted. He tried to droplet it. It's unaffected by spell and trap effects. He got an RTFC, read the freaking card. Um, so, yeah, that was really cool to see. And it's a shame that he didn't make top 64. Uh, I, I'm, if I had to guess, he probably went into day two, X2, uh, and then lost in day two. So it was like, you know, you're out by that point. But could you imagine if Ancient Gears ran it back through a whole just field full of Fiendsmith, Snake Eye, you bell crap, and then we see Ancient Gears and that dude's just big cheesing, you know, like with his Nationals win? Bro, that'd be crazy. So who knows what's going to happen now at Worlds, Banlist, Dependent. Maybe we'll see people roll up with Ancient Gears <laughs> and like we'll just see all the madness happen. I, I actually think Worlds is going to be a toxic dumpster fire because you got to keep in mind, I believe, no, 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 Maxi won't be legal. I started thinking Maxi would be legal, but it's banned here, so that means it'll be banned for Worlds. But the Mulch Army, Perilia will be legal. Um, yeah, a lot of that baby bag bullshit is going to be legal. I'm sure Fiendsmith will be legal. Fiendsmith something is going to win. I'm sure it's going to be like maybe Fiendsmith Ubel or some crap or maybe fiendsmith snake eye fire king whatever it's it's toxic i'm so glad i didn't go to nationals i did not want to have to go that whole way to texas just to get my ass cheeks blown out of the venue by fiendsmith garbage even though i pulled a whole core out of my case but i think i would have just rolled up with like white woods runic stun or white forest whatever it's called and just had a good time but fiendsmith uh has won the ycs if the one dude that made top eight with tempai somehow wins then i'll take this video down but i'm sure at this point it's going to be fiendsmith either fiendsmith snake eye or fiendsmith ubel who gives a shit what it is it's fiendsmith something so thank you konami for giving us the tier zero deck oh the last thing i wanted to mention <laughs> so <clears throat> one of the writers for tcg player had the balls to say out of like 2000 almost 2700 players whatever it was 2653 i think <clears throat> they did a pie chart and they showed what all the decks were in it. So it was like f over 30% of all those players were playing Snake Eyes. But then they're like, oh, look, 64% or whatever it was of other. Like, it's not even classified. And they're like, it goes to show that the other decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! can compete with the best in the room. And it's like, you're going to, you have to take, think about that. Over 2,000 players, you have to create a pie chart out of almost 2,700 players to finally get a graph that is not just, here's all of the Snake Eyes, and Snake Eyes is clearly the best deck. It took you surveying everything in that venue and putting it in other, which could be anything, right? And compare it to Snake Eyes among with, like, all the other, like, 3, 4, 5% of decks that made it in, like, Gimmick Puppet, Labyrinth, Runic, whatever, right? Like, those decks are named, but then you have the other. So someone walks in with Beaver Warrior Beatdown, and they're considered other, and that's how you finally got your fucking pie chart to be bigger than the 
Fiend Smith Snake Eye, and even Fiend Smith like U Bell stuff. Well, actually, if you include that, it's even bigger. But let's just say Fiend Smith Snake Eye to make it bigger than that half of the pie chart. That is how toxic this format is. That is how bad this format is. And as I've said before, out of my 16 years of playing competitively, I've been through Teledad. I've been through Dragon Ruler. I've been through Necroz. I've been through all of these dog water formats. This is the worst format of all time. Even worse than Tier. Because at least with Tier, if you hit the shifter, or if you are just in the mirror match and you have a shit ton of buy steals, you at least stand a chance. You can't even use buy steals in the Fiendsmith Snake Eye mirror match. Like, sure, you can hit Fiendsmith guards, but, like, you're not hitting the normal summon of Snake Eye Ash. And if you're wasting your hand traps on that, then you're just crapping yourself all over the floor because you're just going to lose anyway if you're not stopping the Snake Eye combos. So this is the worst format of all time. I don't care what anyone says. I've always said that Dragon Rulers was a terrible format. I still think it's a terrible format. But this format is absolutely terrible. I'm sick of it, and I'm ready for a new list, and I could not be happier to see that... Snake Eyes and Ubel and all that is the best decks in the room. Just means that they're going to receive great hits on the ban list. In Konami, in Konami, I trust. At least this once. They could absolutely fumble the football and say, hey, here's our pie chart that says other, like 64%, whatever. Hey, that's more than Snake Eyes. This is a healthy format, guys. Let's just wave our hands and dance with our little pom-poms while Billy Brake and whoever the other dude is gives terrible commentary. I'm sorry, but the commentary that these guys do is garbage. I'm sorry. Billy, I love you. You're cool. Uh, don't don't quit your day job, homie. Just just don't. A lot of that commentary in these live streams is just cringe. Uh, y- your boy could do better commentary. And I used to work for a television station, so I know how to commentate. I know how to talk. I make YouTube videos. Your boy knows how to ramble. Guys, let me know what you think about all this and more down in the comments below. Cannot wait for a new balance. So I'm going to sit back, relax. I'm going to go grab me a beer while we wait for this new format. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.